ahead and get started. This is the Albernet City Council meeting for Thursday, June 11th, 2020 at 7 p.m. We'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Uh, we're going to waive the Pledge of Allegiance. We are doing this uh, through our Zoom session. Hopefully, this will be the last one that we have to do this, but I ask everybody to bear with us uh, while we do these electronically because of our current pandemic situation. I'll ask the clerk to go ahead and call roll call to establish a quorum. Uh, Councillor Menton? Councillor Sarazin? Present. Councillor Shans? Present. Councillor Trum? Present. Councillor Bosenberg? Present. Very good. Let the record reflect that we have a quorum to conduct business this evening. Item number four is approval of the agenda. I'll ask the clerk to enter uh, amendments to the agenda as presented. No. Very nice. You can have a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Moved by Saracen. Second. Second by Bosenberg, I believe. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries. We'll move on to item number five, which is the sheriff's report. We do this uh, received electronically. It is in your packet. I assume everybody's had an opportunity to review that. There isn't any items on there. I assume, again, that's a uh, reflection of our current situation. Uh, I don't think we've had any additions to it. Have we? No. No. Okay. Then I'll go ahead. Unless, Unless there's, there's any comments on the sheriff's report, we'll move on. Any comments? You know, move on past the sheriff's report on the marriage report. This evening, I do have a couple things I'd like to mention. Um, we were going to do it last Tuesday, but since it got delayed because of the weather, we did have food trucks. The first of a series that we're hoping to do uh, in town tonight. Uh, it was in the lot at the, at the school. They're here from five to seven. It looked like it was very popular. I didn't get an opportunity to eat there just because of the time constraints, but um, it looks like it went very well. Uh, we'll have to get some feedback from the public, and um, we'll uh, we'll make additional um, adjustments as we go. But um, I, Maggie, I believe we'll have to talk to her and see how it comes uh, comes out on um, the people that set that up. So if there's any comments, <coughs> council folks. Um, have when it gets to their reports. I'd like to hear feedback from that. I know that um, they, we've worked with the folks that have set that up as well as the school to try to make that a success. It looks like it went well. Also, I want to know that we want to balance that between um, not only the food trucks and the vendors and support things like that for the city, but also our local vendors and make sure that um, we're not causing an issue with parking or the folks that are also here locally um, with their businesses. So. Uh, father's Day is this month. I want to say uh, um, uh, congratulations to those fathers out there and happy Father's Day since that'll be coming up here shortly. And then um, also I just want to note to be thinking about um, the reopening. It isn't an agenda item, but if uh, I'll be looking for comments on that uh, as well as <coughs> state in reopening officially, we still have a proclamation that's keeping limited access not only to City Hall, but uh, some of the other items within the city. So I'll be looking for comments uh, about that when we get to that item. Um, I have a note here too that uh, our new part-time employee, Lee, has done an excellent job. I think Guy's gonna talk about it in his, in his report and we'll be looking at it a little bit later when um, we're doing looking at salaries for the next year. But uh, I've had an opportunity to talk with him on several occasions and seen him around town and, uh, I think he is doing an excellent job. So uh, those are just a few of my comments that I had scratched down uh, throughout the month and I wanted to uh, talk about those briefly. So we'll go ahead and move on to the council reports uh, since uh, he's right to my left. We'll start with uh, Councilman Shantz. Looks like Chester's muted. Yeah, his mute, Daniel. Oh, okay, here, just a, just a second. I think we're having just a little technical difficulty, but I can correct that right now. Here you go, Chester, do it off my. I'd just like to repeat what I said last month, the fact that our road use tax and our loss tax will be down this year. There was an article in the paper about it that Joe was kind enough to. Probably 25. Thank you, Chester. 
Okay, then we'll go ahead and move on. Bethany, would you go ahead with your comments, please? Yeah, I just had one thing I wanted to put a reminder out with the golf carts. Uh, it is a privilege that we have here in town. I love to see everyone out and around uh, socializing from their safe distance right now. But just a reminder to everyone that uh, with those golf carts, we do follow state code. So they are only to be operated by anyone with a valid driver's license uh, to stay off the main streets. So those are primarily Roosevelt and Main Street, though you can cross at established intersections. Um, they have to be properly marked as a slow moving vehicle, only operated from sunrise to sunset. Uh, all this is in the state code. It is the cart owner's responsibility to ensure that these are being followed. So uh, I just wanna make that reminder and hope everyone has a safe summer. Okay, very good. Uh, Dave Bosenberg, Councilman Bosenberg. Uh, I don't have anything. All right, Councilman Trump. Uh, I don't have anything to say. All right, and Councilman Minson. I want to remind the citizens that even though the ATV TV ordinance in Lynn County did pass, we're not allowed to drive them in the city limits of Albernet at this time. I have seen several <coughs> ATV UTVs uh, beating around town, making a lot of noise. Uh, I've had actually several complaints about them. So just a reminder, they are not allowed in the city limits. And I know my some of my neighbors have talked about um, calling the sheriff to resolve these issues. Okay, very That's good. All. Uh, and also, we do have ATVs on, it, uh, on the agenda tonight, so we can address that a little bit further when we get to that item. But thank you for your uh, comments on that. Uh, any uh, comments based upon the, any of that? From any other council people? All right. Oh, go ahead. No, no other comments? Okay. Then we'll go ahead and move on to the citizens comments. Here in the city of Albernet, we have two types of comments, one for agenda items and one non-agenda items. Uh, this is the time and place if you have a, a comment for the agenda items. If you do, state your name and address clearly for the record and you have up to five minutes to make your comments. For again, these are for agenda items. Hearing none, then we'll move to non-agenda items. Again, you'll have up to five minutes. Just state your name and address cleared for the record. And this is your opportunity to uh, make any comments on non-agenda items. I had a non-agenda question from a resident that came in on the Nextdoor app. Mm -hmm. This is from David Phillip. And he was wondering about getting a speed limit sign and or a speed bump on Howard Street. And then also he said that there is a lot near his that is flooded and breeding mosquitoes. Can the city require it to be sprayed by the owner? Uh, again, at the comments section, but uh, we can address questions if we wish to do so. Uh, Guy, do you wanna uh, handle any of that as far as the ordinance? Sure. Uh, as far as the speed limit sign and the speed bump, I assume we're, he's re referencing a lot more traffic due to County Home Road being closed. Uh, I talked to the Sheriff's Office today and requested the radar trailer to be put on the north edge of town. Maybe that to take care of it. Uh, it it's, should be common knowledge to all licensed drivers that residential areas are 25 mile an hour speed limits. Uh, if it continues, we can ask the Sheriff to patrol street a little bit. Uh, having not talked to Dave, I don't know if he, if there's a specific group or person going fast, so I don't know about that, but uh, we can work towards a solution. A speed bump might be excessive in my opinion. <coughs> as far as the, the lot he's talking about, that's actually farm field. Um, it's that area always floods. It will recede. The water will go. It's wet this spring and we're going to have mosquitoes no matter what. So um, uh, to me, that's that's just a wait and see. Uh, you know, if it continues raining and it's flooded for months, maybe something will have to be done. But I don't think we have anything in our ordinance that would could allow us to force an owner to spray for mosquitoes. Okay. I'm muted there. All right, there's the comments from the citizens, the update from the public works director. Any uh, council person have comments on that? Not the same thing as Guy said. It's a 
flooded area. It's wet every year, you know, it'll dry out. And if it doesn't, it'll, you know, it'll be there. So it's nothing new. I think you got one over by your, your spot there, Charlie. That's yeah, same I, think, thing, you know. I think the last two days we got a tail end of one of those tropical storms that I can't pronounce, but I believe that we're good for clear weather now for the next, you know, five to seven days. So hopefully that'll clear some of that up. Other comments from council? Okay, and then hearing none, we'll go ahead and move on to item. Oh, any other comments uh, written, received from the clerk? All right, very good. All right, then we'll move on to number nine, which is the written reports. Uh, your written reports are all in your packet. I'm sure you've had an opportunity to review those. We'll go ahead and start with our chief. Uh, chief, do you have any other comments other than your written report? Uh, no. And the public works. Um, do you have any other uh, comments other than your written report? Just want to emphasize that Lee uh, Sloan, our part-time employee, has been doing a fantastic job, and so I just wanted to make make it clear he's he's doing great. All right, very good. Uh, I should have asked also, Council, any uh, comments or questions on the fire department's written report? Did we get an estimated cost on the bunker gear? Uh, you had it last meeting. I thought the minute said we tabled it because we were looking for some numbers no you're we wanting to know how many how much gear we had left okay to purchase but i gave you the cost last meeting what is in the cost for five sets of gear uh i was i was not present to we oh have... okay i see it now sorry what, re, go ahead and state for the record would you joe well it said uh five uh sets of bunker gear would fif be fifteen thousand seven hundred and seventy dollars and earn 70. Thank you. And we have about 10 sets left to purchase. So five this year and five next year. All right. Very good. Chief, do you have, you keep an inventory, I assume, of all your equipment. Do you know how many, um, if you have it handy, do you know how many total sets of um, gear that you have and what the expiration is on those? Uh, not readily available, no. Okay. Can you get can you get that information for us so if we need to do additional planning beyond next year we can have that yeah all right very good okay uh and it's a it's an agenda item too i mean we can we can get additional questions on it when we get to that point so any questions for public works other than what's in the written report all right very good we'll move on to city clerk uh danielle anything uh other than comments other than what's on your written report no. All right, very good. That completes the written report section. We'll move on to item number 10, which is the approval of the consent agenda. Uh, ask the city clerk, do we have any um, changes to the consent agenda as submitted? I added five invoices uh, from today and I gave them to Chester before the meeting to review and I've updated the claims list in the financial report in your packet on the um, town cloud app so those should be reflecting that um, those added invoices do you want to right. list them out since we're having a little technical issue then i'm going to go ahead and turn this over to chester again so he can uh approve those are we good with all right we're approved those are approved then yes. I, all right i just wanted to note it because they had updated it since i first sent the packet out all right, uh, council, do you need those stated for the record or have you had a chance to review those uh, with your packet? I'm good with the packet. All right, all right. having those updates then, uh, I would seek, an or seek a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. So moved. Moved by Saracen. Second That's by Sean. Good. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We'll move on to new business. First one is the special. Oh, did you uh, send out the uh, notification? We're going to move on to a slight difference there. We don't have the first person on the Zoom yet, so we're going to move on to item number B. Uh, we'll come back to A, which is the special event permit for the ACDC benefit days on 8-1. I believe we have Ryan on here for that. Ryan, we'll go ahead and recognize you. Go ahead, sir. Uh, present. You, we have yeah. We have a copy of your for the 
uh, for the event. If you want to go ahead and just uh, give us an overview of what you're planning, we'll have it uh, available for us and we can talk a little bit more about it. Uh, I don't have a copy here with me. Um, pretty much the same as every year. Uh, we'll be using Main Street uh, from the South Church to the fire station. Um, looking for live music there at night, uh, bags tournament. Um, I do have one here. Do we have an electronic we can put up on your screen, Guy? Oh, that's easier too. All right. Well, I have a co I have the copy of yours here. You asked for a full uh, on the uh, request. You have a partial or full closure of public streets, uh, restricted access to private property, um, sale or distribution of merchandise, food, beverages, including alcoholic beverages, erection of a tent over 400 square feet, installation of a stage. Uh, the band shell truck, trailer, etc. Uh, placement of portable toilets, placement of temporary signage or banners, and the amplified sound. Does that sound correct, Ryan? That's correct. Okay, so again, uh, we've all been to uh, the event before. So um, I look at the traffic plan here. That looks like a similar one for the parade. Correct. All right, I'm going to all uh, uh, ask for comments and seek approval here in a moment. You are aware, though as I'm sure council are, that the, the state has canceled their uh, fair for the year and many other events similar to this have been canceled? Yeah, I'm aware of that. Okay, all right. Then I'm gonna go ahead and open it up to council for any comments that they have in uh, reference this event. Um, I'll go ahead and start. Um, it does look like you have a similar uh, lineup or agenda for as normal years. I do have concerns about any children's games. I know anything uh, of that nature. We just have to be very sensitive with sanitation practices and those types of things. And I, I've worked those games and I know the crowds of kids that you get generally unsupervised. Um, I just don't know how feasible that's going to be for this year, especially with school opening just around the corner from that. And I know they're trying to be extra careful and and how they approach it. So I, I do have concerns about the kids' games, um, but I also want to recognize, I see you've added a beer tent, which was one of my concerns from last year in that the alcohol was not contained to a certain area. But again, in the area that's outlined between, uh, within the street between what is City Hall and the clinic, um, I don't know how you'll maintain that six feet that's still recommended. So um, those are my concerns. And I apologize, I should have called people out by name. I forget them on them sometimes, so I will do that. I will uh, do Councilman Trump's last since he's going to use mine for audio. So I'll move on to Councilman Trump. Any comments or concerns with this event? Um, I, just have, I just have the same concerns about social distancing with the situation we have going on right now. Okay. Councilman Bozenberg? Yeah, I go along with that, with the social distancing. Menson. Oh, sorry, Councilman Bosenberger, you got you off there. Any other concerns? No? Okay, Councilman Menson. Yeah, uh, same. Um, but isn't the governor opening everything up this Friday? We were reading the last proclamation here uh, earlier. Any comments from you, from the clerk? I put the new proclamation in the packet so you can review it. There's a section on mass gatherings, but it just basically states to practice social distancing and then recommends that people stay home if they're vulnerable or feeling sick. Okay. But no. to be clear, Brian, that does only go through June 25th. And we are, I mean, we're looking out into August, but I think we need to be prudent to keep it in mind. Sure. Here, I'll get to get yours so you can make any comments you may have. I guess I would like to know what kind of plans you have to ensure that everybody that comes is going to stay. Who's going to place that? Ryan? Um, so, uh, sorry, I didn't know if you were going to me or Brian here. Oh, Ryan, I'm sorry. Uh, your, what are your plans to uh, enforce social distancing? Um, 
So I think for the social distancing thing, we will have signs posted up and probably have a couple of people walking around and maybe reminding groups not to gather, you know, close, you know, remain that six feet distance. Um, with your beer tent concern, uh, we are also thinking with that, we may, if allowed, possibly maybe move the beer tent to include like the intersection right there, kind of out where we put the stage, uh, maybe make it a little bigger area for, for the beer tent. Uh, as for the kids' games, um, if it comes to that, you know, we can we could always just not put them out. Um, otherwise, you know, we can put hand sanitizer and stuff like that to enter and exit the uh, the tent that we have the game the games in. Um, okay. Are you any questions? No, I just like your law. They're gonna do it. Yeah, I think that I think that's going to be one of the the biggest experiences is how that's going to be pulled off. Before um, I complete all the comments, I would also like to hear from Public Works on the logistics end of this. Guy, I think uh, we'll never control all these people. Can try and expand to give more space if there's going to be a large number of people. Um, we could move some things up first. Uh, street uh, and provide all the space that you need. Uh, your request is to close the street from Roosevelt to um, to First Street, but we could also move things up into Second Street, First Street, Second Street, and of course not Third Street, but give you all the space you need to spread everything out. I think that that's going to be the key. The problem is we're never going to control all these people and keep them away from each other it's it's going to be nearly impossible no matter how hard we work at it so um but at least if things are are opened up and spread apart that's the best we can do any other comments on the council yeah i would like to say i agree with you guys as far as you're not going to control people and um Ryan, for me, signage is good. Adults are adults. They can make their decisions. I would say we need to be careful with anything for children um, because they, they don't give that intentional consent like adults do. Um, as for the beer tent, I'm not telling you where you have to put it, but I would like to see it contained. I know we had issues last year with alcohol wandering around the streets, and we also need to be mindful of the businesses, so let's just be careful on First Street if we're cutting off access to lefties. I know there was an impact there last year as well. Okay. Any other comments? Other comments? As in Ryan Um, I I think we can we can handle that spreading everything out. And I know last year uh, with the lefties we did um, we did put signage up at both the south and north end of town that uh, for the detour to get in there using the uh, the back way, I guess from the, the west of lefties. We put signs up to help them out. Um, I talked to Kent and Betty about that and they both agreed that that was probably the best thing to do. Um, other than that, I think, you know, we'll tr we can just do our best to try to distance everybody out and, and try to maintain it, you know. Sorry. Ultimately, the city is not responsible for your event. You are. Make sure that you enforce the rules that are in place under the governor's office. Um, also, with your application, you're required to have a certificate of liability insurance. I don't see one here. So, was that us, Danielle, or was that them? Uh, we think we're waiting on receiving it from the ACDC. Okay. Yeah, I can get, I'll get that for you. Uh, we'll have it pretty much the same one we did last year. Okay, very good. Uh, and that being said, as far as make sure that you're the ones that are enforcing that, it's a, it's a applicant responsibility, not a city responsibility. But other than those comments, unless somebody has something else, then I can uh, seek a motion for approval here. Is there anything, any other questions before we do that? I guess, I guess I'd be looking at approving it unless there's a, you know, a second round of outbreaks, and then we got to relook at it. Any other comments? 
right. With the understanding I, overridden from the governor because of uh, circumstances with community control, then I would seek a motion for the for an application for the special event permit for the uh, uh, parade and event in here. Yes, it looks like it uh, for the benefit days. So. I would make a motion that we approve the special event application for benefit days with the exception that the council reviews it again at the July meeting um, should circumstances change with current proclamations. The motion on the floor is comparison with exception. I'll second that. Second from Bozenberg. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor, um, do it by roll call, would you, clerk? Uh, Men Councilor Munson? Aye. Councilor Sarazin? Aye. Councilor Trum? Aye. Councilor Bosenberg? Aye. Councilor Sean? Yeah, let the record reflect. Sean said aye as well. All right. Um, that's uh, unanimous, so I don't need to know. So the, the motion passes. Uh, you have your application, and uh, we'll review it again next month. But okay. if there's an issue. All right, Ryan. Oh, good, thank you. All right, very good, thank you. Thank All right, you. Then we'll go ahead and move on to um, item A, which is a special event permit. Nancy Fuller, it's her car show on 620. Nancy is present. She'll come on to the Zoom here. <coughs> the application yeah. is I'm sure you've had an opportunity to review it. Nancy is present. She'll go ahead and give an overview of it at that time. Go ahead, Nancy. I'm really not good at these things, so here we go. I've never done this. I've never done this. Um, when I first came to the meeting, it was in February, and I brought the special application permit. I think the only thing that's really changed on that is that we want to add to the map. Did everybody get this map? What it is. What it is. Is we, are trying, is we are trying to look at all different things that could happen this day. If we get the same amount of people or less amount of people, we'll set everything up the same way we did last year and blocking off the same streets. But if we get a lot more cars than we had last year, we're trying to have a backup plan. So I'm trying to get the school parking lot and I sent a thing to, uh, I signed the thing for Danny Trimble today, hoping that she'll get back to me and say it's okay because we need people to police the parking lot to make sure that there are, doing the six foot distancing from, from one group to another group or one couple to another couple. So we need to have people going around the parking lot while the event is going on, making sure that people are reminded that they need to stay that much apart and reminding them that is it's a school policy and I think that would make them listen a little better. And another thought with that is the people walking around is having some of them carry and them pull out yardsticks because it's a reminder when people are walking around. So let's see and also I talked to Steve at Farmer State Bank and he hasn't got back to me yet, but as far as he is concerned, we can use the Farmer State Bank parking lot and the ground that they have that we used to play horseshoes on for our Burnett days. And we can also use the church parking lot and Dave Reed's lot along with Main Street. So, Lee Hot was closed last year is what our intent is. And if we do get more cars than that, then we'll bring them into the school parking lot and we will block off on, what street is that? I don't even remember. Muthart. And make the traffic go around. I don't think we'll have a lot of traffic going around behind lefties because Alburnett Road is closed, so people cannot come and go very much that direction. We do have our insurance turned in. <laughs> I talked to um, Steve Graham about the fire trucks to make sure they're all out and they can get out. We've made 
we'll make sure there's space for the man so he can get through. We have porta potties coming. Um, to my not knowledge, we don't have any hand washing sinks, but we'll have hand sanitizers out and we'll have signs reminding people of the six foot distance. In front of our registration booth, we'll use chalk and we'll mark six foot lines so people, it reminds them of where the six foot is. And I think that's about it. Aside from the fire department, the ACDC, and us, as we're walking around, we can keep reminding people of the six foot distance. Uh, okay, Nancy, um, let me just uh, ask you, you were present for everything that I said to Ryan in, in accordance with um, the responsibility of you folks of making sure it's enforced and hearing all the comments of council previously. For all those. Yes. All right, let yes. the record reflect that. Also, the wearing that your event, you're responsible for the city. All right, let the record reflect that also. I'm going to turn it over to our public works director before I go to con council comments. Logistics. Uh, yeah, I, I can work on that as far as getting roads blocked off and detour signs put up, and that is fine. One uh, recurring comment from last year was from the bank, and I know you're in contact with them. They felt like they were shut down without permission. So if you you need to follow through with that conversation with the bank to make sure either that they that they can have traffic flow to their drive-through. That is something that was was been reiterated several times. So just keep that in mind. But uh, um, the other thing is there's no reason why you couldn't stack cars up First Street. So from Lefties West, as long as we wouldn't block access to Lefties. Um, and like you said, Dave Reed's lot, we could probably, you could probably put cars up Second Street. That's the one that's on the south side of Dave Reed's too. So um, work with me and I'll be able to get the signage up and, and do whatever we can with us still being able to move traffic through town. That's the only concern I have. And the bank, the bank is, was concerned last year, so they need to be taken care of, so. Yes, I will definitely keep in touch with Steve. He was talking to Marion to see if they were going to shut down for the day or not. And I told them if they didn't shut down that we will leave a space for people to go. All right. Very good. Um, I'll go ahead and then take uh, questions from, uh, or concerns from council. I'm gonna do it in the reverse order other than I'm gonna make Chester go last just because he's gonna use my machine. So we'll start this time with uh, Councilman Minson. Uh, same as the concerns before with uh, social distancing and such. Okay, Councilman Trump. Uh, nothing additional. Councilman Bosenberg. Yeah, nothing additional. Just the same as what we, you know, the guidelines with uh, ACDC. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Saracen. Just have one more thing, Nancy, that's unique to your event, and that would be any kind of awards ceremony. So I know the guidelines for sporting events, especially youth sporting events, is that they will not hold ceremonies. So just be careful because that's when people tend to congregate. So I don't know if you do best in class type awards. Um, I don't know how you can maybe have someone walk around with those rather than have people come to one location. So just keep that in mind. That'd be the only part of this event that I'd have concerns. And Councilman Schantz uh, gives me the way that he didn't have any further comments than what was already covered. So given that you have the application in your packet, I have reviewed it. It appears to be in order. Your insurance is present. I don't have any issue with the packet. If we're ready, we'll go ahead and move on to uh, a motion to approve the application for special event permit for Fuller's Car Show. Seek a motion. I'll move. Moved by Saracen. Second. Second. Any other further discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. no. The motion carries. All right, thank you, Nancy. We appreciate you uh, uh, giving us the information on that. So we'll go ahead and move forward with your application as well with the understanding that the governor can come in and do whatever she wants to. All right, very good. All right, that completes that. The next item on our agenda is item C, which is the ATV ordinance. And I believe this is also going to get an overview by both the clerk and the um, public works director. We'll start with public works. You're muted. 
basically with the passage of the county's ordinance as far as ATVs and UTVs go, um, I, I feel like if we don't do anything that leaves us on an island, um, there will be ATV and UTV traffic um, and they will come into town whether we change our ordinance or not. I, I don't have any doubt. Um, I feel like if we have something on the books, uh, we have protection um, as far as allowing the county law enforcement to deal with any issues in town. Um, the county's ordinance is quite uh, complete and, and thorough. Um, I feel like if we were going to adopt an ordinance, we should probably adopt their ordinance with a minor change about speed limits because they only address a total top speed of 35 miles an hour. We would have to add possibly a, a clause to, you know, posted speed limit or 35 miles an hour, whichever is the highest, you know, to make sure that those ATVs and UTVs were uh, staying at our 25 mile an hour speed limit that we have in town in most places. Um, uh, I feel like if we don't adopt an ordinance, we're going to have them in town anyway, and it's going to become a problem. Um, that's just my opinion. It's your choice. That's that's just where I'm at on the on the deal. They they will bring revenue to town if they're able to ride their ATVs and UTVs to town for our businesses. So that's my opinion at this point. Didn't hear you, Charlie. Sorry. I was asking the city clerk if she had any comments or if there were any written comments received from this agenda item. No, I think the ordinance from the county that passed was in the packet. So if you were able to review that, there was also a map that Lynn County put out that showed the restricted areas within the county. Yeah, yeah. I don't I, yeah, I don't know if anyone had an opportunity to review it when it was being discussed at the county. It was a two-one vote, but it did pass, and the copy is in the packet. So, um, had a chance to look at that. Then we'll go ahead and move on to uh, council members for their comments on this or what they want to do want to do movement on this. Obviously, it's not an action item tonight, but it can certainly be put as an action item for next council meeting. So, uh, Councilman Bosenberg. Yeah, um, well, I guess I'm in favor of it. I, I uh, look at, we got snowmobiles coming in, we got golf carts coming in. Uh, not only that, it's gonna bring extra revenue to the, to the, um, the, the bars and the restaurants and the gas station, because uh, there are clubs out there that that's what they do. They go around town to town and eat. So um, that's about what I'm, that's about it, so. I think I'm muted. Councilman Trump? Um, yeah, I think we should have the ordinance just so we can regulate them, them and have the authority to do that. Very good. Councilman Minson? I'm sorry. Councilman Minson? Um, I have a tough time supporting this. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I've already had issues and complaints about it. Um, if, if anything, we do an ordinance that states you can drive on Roosevelt, you can drive on Maine, North Maine, you can drive on Burnett Station. That's it. Um, I don't agree with the posted speed limit. I say 20 mile an hour golf carts don't even go that fast and golf carts are quiet. Um, but we are already having issues with those too. Um, yeah, I have a video of a four-wheeler running down Longworth Avenue going. I mean, I'm just guessing he was going 30, 35 mile an hour and his exhaust was so loud it was echoing off all the houses. So. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that person already ruined it for me. Okay. Uh, Councilperson Saracen. I tend to agree with Brian. Um, if we were to pursue something, again, we're not going to keep them out. The county map, the only way they cannot come into town is um, on Albernet Road. Otherwise, they can come in from the other directions. However, they have no need on our uh, residential streets within the neighborhoods. There's no no reason to be there. Uh, Councilman Bosenberg, you bring up snowmobiles. There's usually marked trails. They don't just get free run of town. Golf carts, again, are quiet and have a max speed. So I have concerns. I know there was a lot of discussion within the county uh, supervisors and around the issue that these are not 
vehicles that are intended for hard surface. So I hate to introduce more risk into town as well. Um, I definitely have to think about it, but I think we need to put more meat around it than what the county has adopted. Okay, now we'll get uh, Councilman Scott here. I don't see how we can keep them out. They're going to come in whether we have an ordinance or not. So I'd like to see us go ahead and write an ordinance and restrict it to the speed limit and wherever we can. Okay. All right, very good. Th those are the comments so far, I guess, tonight. Uh, it would probably be best to determine whether or not we're going to um, pursue something for next month and, it, and or do it that quickly and whether or not we're going to write our own ordinance or if we're going to adopt the county ordinance with some further restrictions as far as speed and road limitations. Uh, pleasure of the council on this. I'd say if we're going to make a move, let's do it while we're still in the codification process so we can just have it incorporated. So um, I don't know if we'd be ready by next month. something we want done at a council level? Is it something we want done with uh, our full-time staff to put, put this together? Obviously, the copy that's in your packet is a, a duplicate of what's out there for the county. So. Have we surveyed? We, we similarly, we usually look at other towns and what they have in place. Danielle, have you surveyed any of the other surrounding towns, some of the restrictions they might have? We pulled the ordinance from, was it Manchester or Monticello? Manchester and reviewed and it was you said it was pretty similar there were some differences the county but um i don't think we've looked to see what other cities in this local area have done yet but we can definitely reach out and do that get information on what they're doing what they're planning on doing as well okay so sounds like uh, you like the full-time staff to put something together similar to what cities have done here with restrictions on both uh, movement within the city and speed restrictions other than that go with what the county currently has is that correct yeah i'd like full-time staff to come back with a recommendation based on their findings and our discussion tonight is that the pleasure of the rest of the council any concerns sounds good to me all right all right very good then we'll go ahead and do that uh if uh staff would go ahead and put that together and have something for us for next month i would appreciate it if it's done before then please send it out ministerial to the um email distribution so that we can look at it before then if we can move quicker we will then we'll move on to item d that says uh we are at um, wellhouse generator and fire station change order uh, discussion and proposal that'll be guy i believe uh, this came about in the process of uh, working through logistics with Alliant to get the electrical service to the fire station. Uh, I've been working at trying to find a way to be able to use one generator to power the fire station and Wellhouse 3. Since the DNR, uh, every inspection we have, um, they haven't yet required it, but they suggest that we generate, have a backup generator for Well 3, and we haven't done it. Um, if the power goes out to well three, it's unusable. Uh, we have a generator on wells one and two, but not on well three. So in the process of talking with Alliant and McAllister Electric, who is the sub for electrical on the fire station, we determined that it would be backwards of what I was hoping. I thought that if we powered the well house, from the new fire station, we could use the generator at the firehouse to back up well three. As it turns out, well three has a heavier load. It's 483 pays. And if we want to do this, we need to set a generator at wellhouse three, power the fire station from wellhouse three. That way if the power goes out, the generator will power both of those units. The change order that you see is not the generator. We still are going to look for grant money to get the generator purchased. But before the parking lot is poured and before the project goes any further, we have to decide if we want to put the wiring underground. So if you look at that quote, it is for installing a transfer switch at well three instead of at the fire station. <coughs> it's for boring in a line from well three to the fire station to provide power for the fire station. And then other miscellaneous items 
that have to be involved with that transfer of power, uh, including a transformer, uh, to reduce the load, the power supply for the fire station. Um, $31,583 is a lot of money, but if we don't do this today, we only have two other choices. We have a generator for each facility, and you're talking a 20, two $20,000 generators that need uh, yearly maintenance and upkeep and the fuel that is supplied to them, they both have to run on a weekly basis. And then also have two monthly service charges, one for the fire station, one that we already have for the well house uh, from Alliant for the rural electric. If we power the fire station from the service that's already in place at well house three, it's $100 a month less because we don't have a separate service at the fire station. Um, and we verified with the electrical engineer and the electrician that this is all perfectly doable. Um, and the electrician who is the sub for our fire station project can do all of this work. He's the one that submitted this to Huff. Um, so it, if we choose not to do it now, but do it later, it'd be considerably more expensive because the parking lot will be poured. Um, the electrical equipment, some would be then obsolete. You would have to remove it and replace it and or replace it all together to do this later. Or the other option, like I said, was to have two complete different generators. Um, I feel like it's the, the most economical way to backup generate both facilities at this time. I wish I'd have known it when we were in the planning stages, we could have built this into the bid. I didn't, I didn't realize it would have to be that way. So my bad on that one. What's, what's the generator gonna run? Just the generator. The, the generator will run both facilities fully if we have a power outage. I mean it cost will, wise, cost wise. Yeah. Oh, 20,000, it, so it's a 60 20, kilowatt. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. so Danny, you don't have to get a bigger one you can use the same one no it's it's the load they looking at a max load per building knowing that you'll never have both of them on max load at any one time and so yes that 60 kilos uh, kw generator will handle both buildings um and the other thing that this opens up to us is there quite possibly is grant money available from the water wastewater side of things through the EPA DNR FEMA that we wouldn't be able to tap into if we were just trying to write a grant for the fire station only because water and wastewater has some money on that side of it too so it makes the possibility of getting a grant better since we're powering both critical infrastructures okay if Graham you gonna Opinion on it? What do you think? I don't mute. Sorry. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I mean, you're going to be saving money in the long run, I think, doing it now. You're good with it coming across, though, and doing both the fire station and the well house? Yep. Okay. Uh, council? I think it makes sense. All right, I'll give my uh, computer to Chester here and uh, maybe can give us an idea of budgetarily if there's... Oh, okay, he's giving me the wave that budgetarily we can do it. So, um, any other questions or concerns on this? That was my question is where are we going to come up with the, I think it was 31,000. It sounds like uh, you're going to, this is a next year's FY thing and we can, with it being supporting both, we can pull funding from two different areas if we need to. Yeah. Is your intent to pull all this from bonding? As part of yes, yes, because we, we bonded for the 900000 when we really only needed 700000 and that should still leave us plenty of money to take care of Roosevelt Street if we need to. All right, so it, uh, Brian, it funded from the original project through the funding uh, the project and bonding and bonding operating. operating. Right, I caught all that. You did not or did? 
I did. Okay, all right. Other questions on this? Do we introduce any risk to it, the connection not working at the fire station by doing this, by it not having its own generator? Because I'd, I'd really hate to have a you know sudden rainstorm, power goes out, and they can't open the garage doors. No, I, I talked at length about the connection, the length of wire uh, with the generator being that far away from the fire station. Um, the Pete McAllister, the electrical sub, had absolutely no worries whatsoever. Um, he, if he's going to run his boring machine, he's also going to put in a second conduit just for control wires for any possible change or, or different idea that we want to do in the future. Um, the, the project was right on the fringe of a certain wire size to go between the two. And so this reflects the larger, uh, we could have squeaked by with smaller wire, but he's like, you don't want any problems. So I'll quote you the bigger wire. Uh, he's not worried. I'm not worried. Councilman John. I didn't catch what you said, Charlie. Uh, it, it, Councilman Schantz was asking that there's with running this, there's no issues with DNR, the inspectors or anything like that. There's no. No, the DNR will just be tickled that we have a generator. Like I said, they hit it. They hit us. That's a check mark on our inspection every time they come that we don't have a backup generator on that well. And that well is actually was actually built for redundancy. We could move our controls from the shop for example if we had a fire or tornado that took out the shop and well three was still functional we could control our water system from well three but not if the power is out obviously okay any other questions uh it it says discussion and proposal are you wanting action on this for approval then You're muted, but he, he he said that he's got to do it now. So we. Yeah. It is an agenda item. Yeah. It is an agenda item. I think I can do it. It's a sizable amount, but I think I can still do it. Through so. All right, a move. Uh, a motion movement by uh, Shantz for approval of the change order at thirty-one five thirty or five eighty-three. I'll second that. Second by Trum. Um, uh, would you call by roll call for me? Councillor Sarazen? Aye. Councillor Munson? Aye. Councillor Trum? Aye. Councillor Bosenberg? Aye. Councillor Shantz? Yeah, let the, re or let the record reflect it was unanimous. Um, Danielle, would you work the change order for it, please? And then get that updated on there for our information for everyone. All right, thank you. And uh, we'll go ahead and move on to item number E. This is the reopening and uh, related events due to the COVID-19. My comments on this is we're seeing more restrictions lifted at the, um, at the governor's level. And this is, uh, if you're following the change orders that come down, it does look like it's positive for Iowa as far as uh, the openings that are taking place. In the southern states, they have had some uh, reoccurrences. So yes. I can't say that we're completely out of the, uh, out of the woods yet. Uh, we continue to review these COVID reports as they come in. If you've not had an opportunity to view those directly through your emails, you can always go on the state, um, the state of Iowa COVID site and look at those as well as the governor's proclamations. Um, I would like to open up the city as soon as possible, meaning uh, the access to City Hall it is a public building and I would like to see that done. As many of you know, I work for the city of Cedar Rapids. They did extend theirs uh, for um, another, all, well, about another month, I think. And then um, uh, I just saw that the county buildings, give me the date, somebody. July what? July 20th. Okay, so it uh, looks like gover uh, government buildings, at least within our county and ci larger cities, are going to uh, still be closed for a little bit. So I don't think it's something that we have to move on tonight or anything like that. That's not what I'm suggesting, but I would like to get our council meetings um, back to open to the public as quickly as possible. So those are my comments on it. And then I'll go ahead and turn it over to uh, the clerk with her update from the COVID governor. Uh, information. 
Uh, I put the proclamation again is in the packet. Um, the restrictions are being lifted. I think I put something from Lynn County in the packet as well. They have extended theirs out, um, reopening to July 20th. Guy and I have been talking about it and we don't have a lot of traffic in here anyway on a daily basis. So I'm not concerned about reopening City Hall to the public. Um, when people have been coming up to the door, we have been letting them in anyway because we're right here. So um, we have hand sanitizer at the counter and we just have been practicing, um, you know, keeping good distance when people come in if they need something. And then the payment drop box in front of the post office has been utilized more than normal and that's been good. So I don't see any reason to continue to keep City Hall closed, but um, open to what you guys think. Go ahead and open that, that up to comments now, uh, Councilman Saracen. My only comment is uh, the protection of you two. We can't really afford to have either of you sick for, I mean, it's, it's weeks of recovery if it does happen and just your mental and physical well-being that goes along with that. Um, I, I know we don't get the same traffic as like a Cedar Rapids building. I would hesitate not to require masks, but on the same token, I don't necessarily want to force you to have to wear a mask eight hours a day. So if we were to go this direction, uh, the hand sanitizer, I say we need to make sure that that's available and can be socked up. And I would say if anyone enters and is in the the office that everyone be masked. Councilman Manson. I would agree with what Bethany said. Um, I know where I work in Marion City Hall, whenever I'm in the common areas, I have to wear a mask. Uh, when I'm in my office, I don't have to. So I would completely agree with Bethany. If anybody is in City Hall, then mask up. I don't have any comments additional. Councilman Bozeman. Yeah, no, no additional. Chester, Chester says no. Are you having any issues getting uh, uh, supplies, either Guy or Danielle, to that? Either for yourself or for City Hall? Uh, we haven't tried. We got some masks, so I think we're okay there. Um, Okay. Last time I checked for hand sanitizer, it wasn't available to be purchased anywhere, um, but I haven't checked in a while. So. But we're doing okay with what we have? We are, yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, okay, then we're going to leave it as is with the proclamation in place. We'll continue to follow the govern governor's guidance, and then we'll review this again next month. Is council okay with that? Yes. All right, very good. We'll move on to item number F, which is uh, tobacco permit renewals. If you've not had a chance to look at those, I'm not sure the current ones are uh, in the packet, but I can tell you there, uh, if I have this here and it's for lefties and for the clinic, uh, are there any additional ones to add or the only thing we have? Daniel? We just have those two renewals and I reviewed the applications and they were filled out correctly and completely. And okay, they so paid. these are not new, these are just <coughs> renewals for lefties in the clinic. If there's no questions, I'd seek a motion to approve both of those for renewal? So moved. Moved by Saracen. Second. Second by Bozenberg. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. The motion carries. Thank you. Item G is a resolution 06-2020-01, which is setting employee wages for 2021. Again, we do this each year. You have the item in your packet. There's an explanation as well as our current uh, pay chart. We can do these one at a time, but I would like to approve them all at once. The first employee uh, is uh, Danielle Breck. She's a step or she's a grade nine step three. She would, uh, if approval, she would get a step one or one step unless you want to advance her further. Single step would move her from a grade nine step four, which would be a current wage <coughs> 257. I can tell you that uh, many times these are associated uh, to their uh, employee reviews. Employee reviews are done twice a year. Her last review was done at the beginning of the year. Um, I, if you recall back to that um, uh, council meeting, um, she did receive an uh, exemplary review that's available <coughs> here at council or here at City Hall uh, in her personnel um, uh, folder. But uh, again, I think you don't need to read a review to know what kind of job she does. So um, any issues or any discussion on a, a step one advancement for the city clerk? I'll open that up to comments now.
Hey, listen, you know, I'll just tell you, um, you've done a great job for a short period of time that I've been on here. It's been impressive to watch you work. So, uh, you know, the way you run um, your packets and everything have been really great. So, and uh, budget this year was really, really good and really easy to, to understand a lot better than what it has been in the past. So, you did a great job. Thank you. Any other comments for the city clerk? All right, so your options will be uh, a zero movement, a single step, or, or a two step. Do we have any, um, any comments there prior to? I don't need to know just a second. I can move on to the other two and we can make them all at once if you like. Okay, then we'll move on to the public works director, Guy Trimble. He's currently a grade 10, step three. He would, uh, a zero movement, of course, would leave it the same. Moving one step would move him to a uh, grade 10, step four. That is an advancement to 2486. Again, if you attach it to their uh, public or their uh, employee reviews, he received an exemplary review uh, at the beginning of the year. His next review would be due next month, and you would have an opportunity to review uh, his one from January by coming to City Hall and reviewing his personnel packet as a council person. And then we'll go ahead and, and any comments for Guy on his performance or anything that you wanna say at this time? Okay, then we'll go ahead and move on to the last one that Lee, Lee Sloan, I always mess up his last name. Um, okay, he is a um, seasonal employee, a part-time, whatever you wanna look at it, but he is at a grade four step one, 12, 10, if you move him one advancement, he would move to a step two, which would be 1251 an hour. Uh, I think that he does an excellent job as well. He's always working hard when I see him. But uh, any comments on our seasonal part-time employee, um, Lee? Okay, then you have all the comments and information in front of you. Uh, pleasure of the council. Again, I'm gonna, I will need a decision here, so I'm gonna read them by name. I'd like to get one motion to do all these at once. So, um, clerk. Danielle Breck, stay the same, one step, two step. One step up, four. A single step up, yeah. Uh, Councilman Schantz is suggesting a single step increase for the city clerk. All agreed. Anyone opposed to that? All right, a single step increase for city clerk. We'll move on to the public works director. The same thing, Councilman Schantz says we're budgeted, we can budget for it, it's there, and a single step increase for the Public Works Director for next year. I think that's merited. Okay, we don't see any dis disagreement there. Uh, the part-time employee, um, do you want to say anything about him, Guy, about his duties or anything before that? He is new, huh? Okay. He is new and he is young but he has uh, outperformed anything I could have guessed for a, for a kid that age he's always looking for something to do if he's done with what I've given him and uh, comes in whenever I ask and stays as long as I ask he's, he's just really doing good so a one step in cents an hour so. all right okay uh, and Chester's saying we could do it also if we want to advance him a step to step two so any comments or questions on that? So Guy, you did have to step out due to the storm during that meeting when we did make that approval. Part of our concern with him only being 17 is the restrictions on the equipment he can run and those types of things under OSHA regulations. So that is where that decision stemmed from. Um, I'm glad he's doing a great job, but I would say that based on I mean, his responsibilities are somewhat limited based on what we've seen from other parts of employees. Uh, that have been uh, at more of a professional work where we had the opportunity to maybe keep them on longer term, whereas we understand that he has to go back to school and this is very much just a summer employment. Um, I would be more comfortable just leaving him where he is, but I leave that open to the rest of the council. Other comments on um, the part-time employee, Lee Sloan, uh, where other, other council people? I believe Bethany summed it up pretty well for me. Councilman Bosenberg, any comments? Yeah, that's I, I think so. Leave him where he's at right now, and then if he comes back next year, look at a different. Okay, you acquiesced to that. All right, that's fine. 
All right, then we're in agreement then. All right, then I would seek a motion. And again, I'll have to do this by roll call, but it sounds like we have a, we need a motion to uh, one step van, uh, advancement for full-time staff, city clerk and public works director and a zero increase for uh, seasonal employment. I'll make a motion. Motion by Bozenberg. Second. Second by Trum. Any other discussion? All right, would you call it for me, clerk? Councilor Sarazen? Aye. Councilor Menson? Aye. Councilor Trum? Aye. Councilor Bozenberg? Aye. Councilor Shantz? Shantz vote was aye. That's unanimous. Um, and that is July 1, correct? Or is that effective immediately? That's July 1. July 1. It says it's July. Thank you much. All right, we'll move on to item number H, which is the uh, budget discussion and review. There's a copy of the budget uh, through June in your packet. I'll go ahead and have the clerk give an overview real quick, briefly, hopefully, and then we'll discuss. I did update with those uh, invoices that I entered today that um, updated the claims list as well. So that should be where we are at current with expenses and revenue. So I just wanted to put that out there so you guys could see where we were at presently since we're coming up on the end of the fiscal year at the end of this month. Councilman Schantz, do you want to say any? He doesn't have any comments, but uh, any other comments on where we're at with the budget or any concerns with any budgetary items? I, I did review it. I see we are over in a couple categories. Uh, nothing extremely bad, but um, we were over in a few areas. Comments from council? I have none. Okay, hearing no comments then, we'll go ahead and you have those in there uh, packet. You can review them again later if you uh, need to reference something that comes up still in the meeting. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and move on to item number I, which is an overlay quote discussion. I'll turn that over to Public Works. Thank you. Uh, this is a conversation that I had with MSA engineer Ryan Hosh. Um, he was talking about what might be next. I just mentioned that Third Avenue appeared to me like it's the street that we need the most attention in town uh, as of right now. He immediately wanted to provide this quote to do what he's calling crack and seat, which basically is an overlay. Um, they set a concrete breaker down the street and break the concrete and then overlay it with an asphalt material. And the benefit of this, of this type of overlay is that it's supposed to uh, last 20 years or more. Um, he says there's examples in Cedar Rapids and I believe Hiawatha of crack and seat that uh, one of which is 20 years old already. Um, he, he suggested it'd be a great uh, solution for our third avenue. That being said, we've got a fire station project going on. We have got probably a, a loss of income from lost and from road use. This is not something I'm proposing right now. It's something that I wanted to bring to your attention that could be a way to take the street out 20 years so we can work on other things in the meantime. So my, my reason for bringing this up is to put it on your radar. This might be a two years from now project, three years from now project, sooner if the street starts to break up, we're maybe not all of Third Avenue, but um, $268,000 for that length of street to be a 20 year solution is probably worth keeping in our back pocket. That's the only reason I wanted it on the agenda was to uh, to do this. And I do intend to go look at the, the 20 year old project and see what it looks like firsthand. Uh, just haven't got there yet. So just wanted to put it all on your radar. Was this for the entire stretch of Third Avenue? Is it Third Avenue? Yes. Yep, from Howard Street to the Diamond Club. Guy, if you get that address, send it to me, would you? Yep, will do. We'll go in and look too. Yep, you bet. Guy, is this Ryan writing up a bit here? Like, is this his cause? Yeah, this estimate? engineer estimate, yeah. So, okay. yeah, no I idea how accurate ton. it is. Yeah, 100 bucks a ton for asphalt's a little steep. Yeah. Well, and there's no way they're going to come up with a too cheap bit 
and the, an engineer is not. So, yeah, it could be much less than that. This is simply from MSA. Yeah. My other concern with doing overlays on our older streets is we don't get a look at infrastructure underneath and if anything needs updated. So that's something else to keep in mind. Sure. And I thought about that too. Third Avenue does have a lot of new water main under it and all of the sewer has been lined. So that's another reason it makes it a pretty good candidate for uh, this kind of overlay. Um, by the time that 20 years is up, we might have to do some work. But Thank you. So. Uh, any other, any other comments? Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. Well, take a second. New business. First item is a logo on apparel for employees. Uh, we discussed this before uh, at uh, previous councils. I think what we're looking for here this evening is to go ahead and move forward with that for the city staff. And uh, I, I, I think I'll ask Danielle in a minute. I think there is an option that if council people want to get, um, you know, an embroidered shirt or something like that for themselves, either for a council meeting or for uh, some of the training or conferences that we do go to once in a while, I think that will be a piggyback option. But I believe this is um, just the apparel that we're going to get for city employees, um, full-time employees um, uh, for the staff themselves. So um, I don't think we have... Um, an exact idea of uh, how much it's going to be. I think we're just seeking for approval, maybe up to a thousand dollars to get the um, get the um, get it started, and then some maybe five hundred dollars a year in maintenance or something. So, edit for next year's budget and get it approved and going. So, give an idea of exactly what it would look like for uh, employees. No, we're still waiting on the Brooks embroidery to get. What? Just the type of landing on wearing. The type? That yeah, these are shirts, polos. So uh, we got quotes for t shirts, long sleeve shirts, and then a couple of jackets. Okay. I, I guess, I, I, unless there's a big issue with employees having um, um, the garment uniforms or whatever it is you want to call them. Um, I, I'd like to know either way and um, and be done with this. I think this has come up a couple, so um, I'd like to go ahead and address it and see if there's an issue with doing it. I don't have a problem with it. I think it looks very professional. I wear a uniform to work every day, and so does all the staff that works in the police building, so even our civilian staff. So um, I'll go ahead and hear from council. What are, what are your thoughts here? I have no issue with this. Um, we left it at allowing, we didn't want to just outline, you know, X number of shirts per year and those types of things because we want staff to get what they please, whether it's a jacket or a vest or whatever it might be. And then I'd also like to throw out um, an allowance specifically for public works as far as uh, steel toed boots and other things that may be required as part of his job that he wouldn't otherwise have to purchase, that that be built into an allowance as well. Other council members, any, does anyone have an issue with it? No, no, I think it's a great idea. Okay, and, and Councilman Shantz is saying the thing, same thing. As we go ahead and collect this information, just so we can clear it off the agenda, is there any issue with approving $1,000 for the first year and $500 every, every year thereafter for um, um, the clothing for city employees? With the understanding that the city owns the clothing and it has to be turned back in once either torn, tattered, destroyed, stolen, or they quit their employment with the city. Is that 500 total or 500 each? That's total. Okay, I, I agree with that. I, mean, yeah. I would make that motion. Yeah, it won't just be buying anything you want anytime you want. It's the, the minimum they need. All right, then I'd seek a motion to approve so we can take it off the agenda. So moved. Moved by Saracen. Second. Second by Trump. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. All right. Aye. Opposed, no. The motion carries. Danielle, would you follow up with the ordering of those and then advise council when it's complete? Thank you. Move to item B, which is the fire station project update. We'll go ahead and hear from uh, public works uh, manager who's managing this and we'll hear from uh, Chief Graham. Go ahead. Okay, everything has been going well as far as I'm concerned. Uh, only one issue so far during construction and that was uh, posts that were made too long. 
Uh, they didn't realize they were too long until they started putting them up. They had to pull several back down, cut them off, and put them back up because they, the tops were cut specifically to hold raptors, so they couldn't just cut the tops off. Lost about a day of, of work because of it. Shouldn't cost us anything. Not a problem. One other concern that will be addressed that I brought up at the last construction meeting is that the, the site around the building, um, they brought in several loads of the, of the base rock to put up next to the building before the framing started. And I really didn't feel like the, the soil underneath was graded to the right depth. I don't think we have the appropriate amount of rock in there. And now that it's rained, several inches there are multiple soft spots in that subgrade jason huff from huff contracting knows that it will be addressed um, but it's not fit for concrete as it sits now there's not enough rock and it's too soft underneath so beyond that everything is going great um, they're working i i feel like on schedule with the exception of the one day lost Okay, thank you. Um, Chief, do you have any issues with the transitioning from the old station to the new station or anything we need to get ahead of for that? Going good? Uh, we're just going to kind of wait till this time to kind of go through stuff and move it as we go. Okay, but no concerns you're going to need from us? Nope. All right, very good. Uh, uh, Tim, catch you, Charlie. Oh, any questions from council on update or transition plan from old station to new station? Okay, if you've not had an opportunity to go out there, it looks like it's coming along pretty nice. I try to get out there as often as I can. If you, once it's complete, I think we're going to have a nice little video of the entire facility being built that we'll be able to put out there. I try to get out there and take pictures as often as possible. So we should have uh, we should have something to put together. Uh, I've talked to Chief Graham about maybe trying to get out there and get a photograph also. Um, so we can do some more with um, the fire department and our and our social media sites. So, all right. If there's no other questions, we'll move on to the last item on old business, which is the fire department equipment request and update. We'll recognize Chief Graham for this. Uh, last meeting, you guys asked or asked to get five more sets. You guys asked how many sets we need to purchase. There's about ten sets left. Um, I mean, give or take, we get more members, whatever. But. Uh, Right now, as we sit, 10 sets a year. So I'd like approval for the 15,770 to get new year for five members. Uh, I'll open that up. To, I got to look at the budget here, but go ahead. I'll open that up to council for any questions. That was going to be a next year's budget, right, Chief? Yes, it'll be for next year's budget. It'll take two or three months to get to get it ordered. Yeah, Do you know, Chief, how old your oldest set of bunker gear is? I mean, what what are you replacing? Uh, they recommend every 10 years to replace and we're 15 to 20 years old on gear. I mean, it's, if something would happen and somebody come in and realize our gear's expired, I mean, it's your insurance, I guess, but. Councilman yeah, Johns made the comment, it, it would, uh, whoops, my Zoom went away. I think I'm back, if you can see me. Uh, you can, we can see, um, get an inventory of what you currently have. And so we can project a replacement. Um, for not only the gear that you have, but future gear, so we're budgeted for it. Yep. Yeah, and for our insurance purposes as well, but that'd make it a little bit easier to be able to do it each year. When you're talking gear, is this uh, the air packs, the, the jackets, the pants, the boots, everything? No, the air packs you guys approved last week or last month, okay. and that will finish off our 12 sets of air packs. This is helmets, boots, coats, pants, suspenders. Okay. The yeah. air packs are only good for 15 years, so. We're all caught up in all them though, right? Yes, I've, I ordered the last two last meeting, so 
we're caught up for a while now. I'll get that figured out too and get it to you on when they expire and all that other stuff. So you're wanting approval of funds tonight, but with the understanding that it doesn't get spent until after July 1. It won't because it takes three months to get them made. And that was discussed last meeting about it too, but it, everything's going to be on next year's budget. Okay. All right. I was absent last meeting, but I'll go ahead and uh, turn this over to council then for uh, a motion and approval or any further discussion. I make a motion we approve the purchase of five sets of bunker gear at the 15,000 quote. How much was the total again, Chief? Give it to me. 15,770. Thank you. All right. So we have a motion by Saracen for the approval of five sets of turnout gear, bunker gear, whatever. 15,770. Second. Second by Trump. Any further discussion? Give them the dollar amount, clerk. Would you call the roll, please? Councilor Saracen? Aye. Councilor Menton? Aye. Councilor Trump? Aye. Councilor Bosenberg? Yep. Councilor Shans? He said aye. All right, let's reflect it past unanimously. You can go ahead and get those orders placed then, Chief, and we'll and then get that process with the understanding it's an FY21 purchase. All right, very good. Uh, that's everything on the agenda. We'll go ahead then and uh, go through and get final uh, comments before we adjourn. Um, Chester? No. Uh, Councilman Bosenberg? None. None. Councilman Trump? Nothing. Councilman Minson. Uh, I'm excited to get back into City Hall because these meetings are tough. <laughs> they're a little, they're a little logistically hard to control, but uh, we we seem to get through it all right. Uh, Councilperson Saracen. Uh, just finally, I'd like to extend my congratulations to you, Mr. Mayor, on your win in the primary for the House seat for our District 95. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. My real work begins now. By the way, it's going to be a long. Long, hard summer and fall, but uh, I'll do my best. I guarantee you, if I if I get in there, at least all of you can make a phone call if you need something uh, and assistance here locally. But it'll be a tough fight. Thank you. And we have that on public record. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So much. <laughs> uh, and then uh, any we just chief anything from you, Chief Graham? No. Okay. Uh, Guy, anything from you? Okay. And anything from Clerk Danielle? Okay, I think that covers it. Uh, then we'll go ahead and I'll seek a motion to adjourn and we'll be done. Mm -hmm. not, not bad, by the way, for time here either. Okay, all right. Motion from? So moved. Moved by Minson. Second. Second by Trump. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Well, no motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you. Have a good evening. Be safe. Have a good one.